Thank you, Mr. Chair. Madam Secretary, good to see you. Uh, question one. Um, in the governor's budget book, it reflected a decrease in the amount of surplus from the unemployment compensation contribution fund. Normally it's about $300 million of surplus. It's down to $165 million. With the implement of uh, Act 144 of 2016, um, the UC fix of, of last session, it was supposed to expedite <laughs> solvency by two years. Um, can you explain what's happening within that fund? Um, thank you. If I uh, understand the question correctly, and if I don't, you, you can help clarify. But um, at the end of last session, the uh, uh, changes that were made to the UC law, uh, both to allow an additional 44,000 uh, folks who uh, uh, were not eligible for unemployment to come on, there were also some changes. Uh, in terms of the amount of benefits and all of those things. The uh, projection for uh, the unemployment compensation fund, where we want to get to 250 percent of uh, uh, kind of what you need in the trust fund, and that's considered solvent. So in aiming to get to 250 percent, uh, we were prior to um, uh, the act, I guess it was Act 44, uh, the, the most recent legislation, we were proje projecting solvency at um, 2025. Uh, if we had just added the seasonal workers or the, uh, uh, I don't like that term, but you, if I say that, everybody knows who I mean. If we had just added the additional folks for eligibility and made no other changes, we would have pushed solvency off for a year to 2026. But because of the additional changes that the General Assembly has, right now it looks like we will hit that 250% solvency two years earlier or one year earlier, depending on how you want to calculate it, in 2024. The one thing I do want to caution folks, uh, this is something that we monitor on a regular basis, uh, looking at what does solvency mean and how are we, it's really, a snapshot in time. So as we look at the snapshot today, based on all of the assumptions that we are using today, which I think are very reasonable assumptions and the same assumptions General Assembly has been using, adjusted for whatever's happened in the economy, we are anticipating reaching solvency in 2024. Now anything else could change that could, that could either accelerate that timetable or, or push it back, economic changes or others. But right now, we're looking at 2024, which I think is good news. So we're still on track. That was just basically a snapshot in time yes. current. Okay. And then um, part of uh, the government that works section of the governor's budget book, um, the governor is proposing changes to Acts 534 and 632, specifically workers' comp, um, some kind of old laws that were put into place prior to work, workers' compensation. Can you explain what changes you're looking for and the exact amount of savings we'll see um, with, with making those changes? Okay, I'm not familiar with the act numbers, but I think I understand what it is uh, that you're referring to. Um, we have made a lot of, uh, the, the workers' comp system, a uh, little primer, the workers' comp system, again, as is actually most of what LNI does, is not paid for by general fund dollars, but paid for either by uh, federal uh, funds, user fees, et cetera. So the workers' comp system and what it takes to operate and administer that is paid basically in terms of uh, uh, by a, a surcharge or a, a premium on the amount of uh, workers comp, uh, from workers' comp insurers. Um, so every year we look at what it takes us to operate and then decide kind of what adjustments we need in terms of uh, how much the workers' comp uh, folks uh, are, are assessed for the premium to run, it, run that. Uh, we have done a lot of efficiency measures in workers' comp over the years that have allowed us to charge less some years. This year, I think uh, we're asking for the uh, amount of the surcharge as it, it, it um, normally is because there are some anticipated regular um, uh, uh, computer um, upgrades and things that have to happen. And if I am answering this incorrectly, 
um, someone will tell me, but I think so. That's actually, what you, were you you are so Acts 534 and 632. Well, I, I know definitely know Act 534. They were put into statute prior to the workers' compensation. It provided uh, workers' comp benefits for individuals within certain corrections and certain special needs homes. Um, yeah, I'm not. Can I get back to you because I, I also know the only other thing in the in the budget under workers comp that's adjusting or the kind of like the that's dropping. Excuse me, are the bl black lung payments, which is kind of a, a small class of folks that that uh, and that is actually state dollars that um, were were taken on as a state obligation like many many moons ago, and there aren't that many people left, quite frankly. Uh, to collect those benefits, and so that number is decreasing. But I'm going to um, ask to get back with you with more specificity if I didn't answer that correctly. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.